Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. Uh, before I get started with today's episode, I just want to mention that uh, I've been messing around with some new mic settings. So if I sound differently, um, you know, that's the reason why hopefully with, uh, you know, how I have things situated right now, I should like kind of avoid a lot of those plosive sounds that I've had in previous recordings but you know uh, i'm still tinkering with it so you know do uh kind of be patient with me in the process but um no today i kind of want to give some general impressions on 2x ko as well as kind of address a concern that i have about the future success of the game coming from a legends of runeterra player uh, for those of you who may not know, and it'd be weird if you're finding this out from me, but recently 2XKO had an alpha lab where people can, you know, test out the game for themselves. I think it was, you know, mainly they're using it to uh, kind of assess their online systems, but they're also taking in player feedback to see, you know, how the game feels in people's hands and to, um, you know, different things like that. And uh, for the most part, Oh, okay, I should say also that unfortunately I wasn't able to get into the alpha lab. I really tried, guys, but um, I, I don't know what to say. I guess Riot Games hates me. Um, so if you're watching this as a video podcast, that's why you're watching. That's why you're seeing like Street Fighter Six footage because again, I just couldn't get into the alpha lab, and I don't really like to use other people's footage for, you know, my own stuff. Um, but you know, it's neither here or there, but no, so far from what I've seen and, you know, watching other people like play the game, you know, very angrily, very, uh, bitterly watching other people play the game. Um, overall the game does look very impressive. I think, um, I, I love the visual style, uh, initially, when they uh, they were talking about like you know the development of this game, I was I like a lot of other people were kind of surprised that they were going to go with um, a two v two tag game, right? Uh, only because from from my own experience, anyways, I, I find like team based games like this, like I think Marvel vs. Capcom, um, the Marvel vs. Capcom series, like there's. Oh God, whether how am I blanking on tag games right now? Like Blaze Blue, uh, Cross. I can't, I'm blanking on the name so hard. Uh, but you know, Marvel like basically uh, tag games in general. Uh, I find that they're harder. Or Dragon Ball Fighters Z. You know, there you go. Um, I find that they're harder to get into because, like, not only do you have to kind of learn the intricacies of like two or three characters in a team but you have to kind of figure out how they like interplay with each other in terms of like combo structure and like assists and what have you and i don't know for me i, I find that like more difficult than just like focusing on like one character and learning the moveset like that so I, initially i was a little surprised when they said that they want to go in that direction for um you know, 2x KO, especially like initially when it was like Project L in the early days, it was just a traditional 1v1 fighter. I think it was taking, um, and you know, in the comments, if you want, if you could correct me on this, but um, I think it was kind of taking inspiration from like, uh, like a robot fighting game, Rising Thunder, that was like a 1v1 game. I, I think they like picked up some developers from that. I, I can't remember the full story of it. Um, so yeah, initially I was surprised that it was a team-based game until they announced that they were uh, that they wanted to do a two v two modes where it's like two players on one team, and you know once it, like th th that makes sense because uh, a lot of other like you know people in the um, fighting game sphere, I think like the example I give is like Sugar Punch Designs talked about this concept of like in fighting games unlike other like competitive genres players don't really have that much of an out in terms of like externalizing their loss you know blaming their loss on some outside factor i mean not to say that you can't in fighting games i mean there are like one or two you know there are a few streamers that have made careers off of doing that either blaming like 
you know, bad net code or bad mechanic design or like whatever. But no, for the most part, like if you compare it to, let's say, uh, a card game or like Legends of Ruterra, where you could blame, you know, a bad draw or you could blame, you know, your other teammates, fighting games really don't have that in the same way. Like, but for the most part, your loss is like, assuming like conditions are like, you know, stable, like keeping everything else constant, your loss is kind of on you, right? And that's like harder to kind of swallow as a player right and to you know and part of that and like in um you know pushing a player to keep going that's like kind of a harder to do with that type of like framework in terms of um you know competition but with 2xko now like if you're playing with another person you could just say oh i lost because my teammate's bad or whatever so i I, I think that's an interesting way, especially to, um, like, again, uh, externalize players' losses. But I think it, it would also help, like, if, let's say, you have a friend that's into fighting games, but you yourself are not into fighting games. It's, like, a good kind of in way for you to, um, sorry, for you to, um, for, like, your friend to bring you in because, like, oh, I like, my my friend who's got a fighting games could like carry my team or to can help carry me, you know, when, when we play. So I think that's like actually really clever. And, uh, I've always kind of wanted it in, I mean, I know like in the past with like net code problems, it was like a lot more challenging to implement like two V two, um, modes like that. I think like Dragon Ball fighters, for example, tried implementing like, uh, like a three V three, like, kind of mode where like each player is just controlling one character i remember like playing it for a little bit when uh and i was like krillin but with the delay based net code that it had at the time it was just abysmal to play like it's just so delayed especially since it had to like balance six players different connections in one game but um no from what i've heard uh 2xko doesn't have a problem because again not only is that rollback but it's like rollback being handled through like the riot games uh system and you know they have like pretty good internet for like their games because that's kind of what they're known for is like a lot of their live service games so um you know so no overall it it does look very good i i think i like the um art style a lot too obviously i don't think not to say that this game is cheap in any way but i think uh obviously it's not i don't think it necessarily has the same amount of money as something like uh street fighter 6 or even tekken does because those are like very much flagship titles for like capcom or um bandai namco respectively whereas you know 2xko i think is very much more of a side project for riot games especially with um the recent restru restructuring that the company company had a while back um but i'll get to that a little bit later but um yeah i i think it's like smarter for them to go for like this more stylized look uh that uh at least for my here too is very easy on like operating systems so you can run the game even on like a toaster or something you know, granted, like, you know, a lot of fighting games aren't, like, necessarily the most, oh, how would I say, like, um, very, not exhaustive, God, what's the word I'm looking for, um, they're not very taxing on most people's systems until you get into, like, you know, Street Fighter Six and, like, the Tekken series, but, you know, for the most part, they're, like, easier on systems when you compare it to, like, other AAA titles or what have you, but... No, I think it does look good. I you could tell like some things are still a work in progress, uh, especially I think with sound design. Uh, a lot of the player, uh, the um, characters' victory poses, especially in between matches, I think are. It, it feels like they're missing sound, right? At least that's what I've noticed. Um. Uh, though their lobby system, by the way, is amazing for what I've seen. The fact that you could just like, w like you have like a little avatar that you control, you know, similar to like Street Fighter Six or even like you know Tekken Eight, but that you can like use your character avatar to walk up to, um, like a cabinet and it'll like project 
the um the video like right in front of you without load screens is just crazy to me that's like such a cool feature and it works insanely well um but no i i, I think overall i am very excited for the game hopefully uh, i think I, I mean i do hope that in the future um they announce more of a beta so i can get footage for you all with uh the podcast so i can test out myself especially um with them introducing like the pulse groove to you know help like somebody like myself who's a modern player scrub uh kind of get into it a bit more um i'm i got i'm i'm really curious how they're going to handle um in terms of like the fuller roster if they're i mean they probably are going to include like one or two yordles especially like timo right because like he's a fan favorite but yeah how they handle yordles in terms of like hitboxes and stuff like that because uh, for those of you who don't like necessarily follow like league of legends yordles are like these tiny little nymph i don't, I don't know what like uh, hobbit kind of creatures i guess i would say in the you know in the uh, league of legends universe right um and you know, I, I think it's some of the backgrounds in the game. You do see a few yordles here and there, and they're kind of like, uh, I think, s somewhat sized up, or I, I don't know if it's like the actual proportions relative to like League of Legends. But like in, in a game like League, you don't have to worry about like character sizes because like you know they handle like hitboxing in a different way from like a two D fighting game. But I'm sure I'm sure they'll pull it off. Like obviously. Um, but with that, I guess I should kind of point to um, the main topic of this video. I guess my concern that I have with uh, 2XKO, especially like, in, especially with its like longevity. So um, I'm coming from this from uh, the perspective of a little while back, there was, a, I think Riot Games went through some like restructuring. I think like some people like lost their jobs. Uh, the two main changes that came with that, uh, and the first one I think being the most devastating, is that they ended their Riot Forge initiative. So, for those of you who don't know, Riot Forge, the Riot Forge, eh, sorry, Riot Forge initiative was basically kind of this plan to make uh, smaller single-player experiences set within the world of League of Legends. So you had um, they made like an Echo game. Uh, they did uh, like an RPG. Uh, they did they did like a few a few different games, and um, for the most part, I from my understanding, like critically, a lot of these games did like really well. So it's it's unfortunate that um, that they had to uh, kind of end the initiative. But I think they said on their end that these games were just not pulling the money that they were expecting or wanting. Um. You know, and 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 like I said, that's a shame. I think that's the biggest shame of like the restructuring because, uh, especially given the context of like the arcane Netflix series, like there is clearly, I think, an audience for people that want to explore the world of Rune Terror. I just, um, I, I think a lot of it was, uh, and some people were pointing this out that, uh, you know, these games are just the Riot Forge initiative games just didn't really have a lot of marketing going into them, at least not in the same way that like they do with like a League of Legends skin, right? Will they have like a whole animated trailer? Like some of these games just did not get that treatment at all. And it's a shame. It, it, it's really a shame. So that, that was like the big one to me. But another part of it was that they said going into the future that, um, and again, this was kind of before like we had more announcements from 2XKO, so I don't know how 2XKO fits into this plan. But they said that um, in the, going into the future that their main life service games are going to be, uh, I think it's obviously League of Legends, Wild Rifts, and uh, Team Fight Tactics. Wait, Team Fight Tactics? Yeah, yeah, Team Fight Tactics. You know, like the, uh, their auto-battler mode right um and that came as a surprise to me because uh at the time well i still do on and off again uh i played uh, legends of Rutera, which was their other live service game 
So shortly after that announcement, the Legends of Runeterra team basically made this um, announcement saying that, yeah, we're going to be dialing back uh, kind of develop like uh, development on our own game, at least from like the competitive scene, because uh, they said that, you know, they just were not making um, a, a they were not like really making any money off of, you know, supporting like the competitive scene at least when compared to uh the path of champions mode which is their like single player roguelike experience um and in some ways that hearing that was kind of, like it was and wasn't surprising uh because okay so what got me into legends of Rutero was that um like from what i was hearing it was like a very generous like online card game especially when you compare it to like hearthstone and magic the gathering arena which i just got so burned with trying to play those trying to really get into those games but i was hurt i was hearing that like no like legend of terror was a very different experience in comparison and so that's what got me to pick it up and no that's absolutely right i think it it's like the most generous uh ccg out there the fact that you know i basically just played like i you know i i started the game i think around when i think it was like when swain came out like it was uh swain i think misfortune if if i'm remembering the expansions correctly it was around that time and uh you know uh basically started as a free-to-play player right uh and within, I, I think, like a month or two of grinding, I was able to build meta competitive decks. And in any other, I was never able to do that with Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering Arena. Like, yeah, it it it, it was very friendly to free to play players. Um, and in some way, it was like to the apparently it was like um, to the game's own detriment. Like, yeah, they couldn't get. Um, you know people to invest in the game monetarily not to say that they didn't try like they had uh season passes where you get exclusive boards or card backs or whatever they even tried to sell like uh champion skins within the context of you know the game um all sorts of different methods but it just did not pan out at all so you know they had to decide that no we're just going to be focusing on like path of champions development that they're basically going to be pulling out on releasing expansions i think even to this date they haven't really announced like a new expansion it's more just you know porting over champions into the you know to the path of champions into like the single player um mode and so i i guess i have a similar worry with 2x ko that uh from what i've read in like interviews they want to take kind of a similar approach to the monetization where at least in terms of playing characters they don't want it to feel like you have to invest money in it that you can unlock characters but from their own uh but from the way that they describe it it's just going to be you know a grind or um to get like to get like you know certain characters or what have you uh which again sounds exactly like what they tried with legends of Rutera. um i think their their solution and what they kind of tested in the alpha labs um is that they want to do kind of this battle pass system where you know you can invest in the past and you can unlock skins colors uh, stickers or what have you and um well, not to say that isn't an incentive for some people. Like I know, um, I think a lot of uh, Street Fighter V's post-game support was done through character skins. It was um, like I, I think it's different for Street Fighter V because Street Fighter V was like a full-priced game, right? So they weren't like dependent on like selling skins, whereas. I feel like the issue is that the issue with 2XKO is that they are dependent on people buying these skins. And granted, this is speculation on my own end. I, again, I'm not working with the same numbers. I like I don't know what numbers they're working with in terms of their assessment of like, oh, 
two X K O is doing well versus it's not doing well. Uh, part of it might just be kind of they're just gonna gauge downloads initially and then from there see you know how it pans out monetarily. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm just I'm just kind of concerned. I I don't know if like this like just offering skins is enough an incentive for like to help with like the the monetate monetization issue like I, I know it worked for like league of legends but i league of legends did come up in like a different like um did come in a different time where uh i mean not to say that like free to play games aren't like still big now but i don't think they have the same prominence as like before um but and you still so you still have like kind of a grandfathered audience in League of Legends that'll like still buy, you know, uh, skins even years later for characters that they like. Um, and I, I, God, I just don't know if you would have the same incentive for like two uh, X KO. I hope I'm wrong. Like I, I don't want this game to like fail in the same way that Legends of Ruterra did. Not to say that like Legends of Ruterra like closed down or anything. Like people still play the game like it still does have a very active scene especially with paths of champion but um you know uh, you you could tell that they've obviously scaled pack uh production i i think what i would want to see um that w that we haven't gone yet with 2xko and maybe they'll do it more in the future is that with their skins like again take maybe take a similar approach to like league of legends because i know in like league um their skins aren't just skins like sometimes for like the more premium skins you get like different voice lines you get like different animation flourishes which especially also uh, league of legends because it's such an old game that you need characters to have um that like having a skin recontextualize a character's animations like helps a lot um but I think I think having like a similar approach for the two X KO skins is like changing, um, you know, maybe animations, maybe like effects and stuff like that, voice lines. Uh, I think that would also go a long way, um, to maybe help sell the skins more. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not necessarily sure. Uh, I I do hope that. I, I mean, it's kind of like a balance, right? Like, you do want the game to do well with, like, its monetization, so it continues to get support, right? Because yeah, I don't want, like, a... Like, it'd be weird for me to say, oh, I want this game to fail or something. But, you know, I at the same time, I don't want it to be, like, too predatory to where it's just, you know... It just becomes so... Uh, it just becomes unpleasant to play in its own right because of that. So I think, like, a good balance... And maybe there's like more things that they can like go into for monetization, like maybe selling more stages in the future. Um, maybe like they they could do like a lot of the approach that like Street Fighter Street Fighter Six is kind of taking, where you know they're selling like uh, music from old games that you can use when like uh, playing yourself. Uh, granted, I think you could also earn some of that music for free, which is I think what I did with like drive tickets. But I think doing something like that for 2XKO um, might also go a long way. Maybe like some of the older tracks from like, like porting over some of the older tracks from like League of Legends, maybe rearranging them if they have like the money or if they have like the resources to do so. But uh, yeah, so that's, I guess that's like my main concern. Again, I'm really hyped to uh, at least try out the game. Um. But yeah, I think that's mostly going to do... Yeah, that's mostly going to be it for me. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And remember that legally you do not have to memorize frame data because I won that court case. Okay, later.